Well, basically using frameworks in projects is of course good because it can increase your productivity and your quality and stability that you use. But um, the thing is with frameworks is that they, they version, right? It might be the case that um, uh, if you're using a framework and uh, it doesn't have all the features that you need, you are waiting for the next version of the framework and that might come along uh, and have that features, but it may be, might be totally differently implemented. So um, the thing is, um, if you have that, you have to re rewire a lot of the code that you have to be able to work with new version of the framework. Sometimes that's unavoidable, but um, uh, in general, you have to be aware of the fact that frameworks change as well. Um, they might cease to exist if an open source team just stops doing that, or they might move into a very different direction in how it's implemented, or it might have uh, the features that you originally used might be changed over time to, to work differently. Um, so, so it's always important to keep in mind that um, although using frameworks is, is really, really good, and writing frameworks is even better, but, uh, uh, well, to do, that is, but uh, um, it, it's always the case that frameworks will change over time. Like, for instance, even the .NET framework that people will think of as being a really stable framework, which it is, but they do change implementations every now and then. I'm choosing frameworks because there's so many out there, um, like I showed in my slide on Coplex, it had over 30,000 projects, and that not, that's not the only source of frameworks. So there's so many frameworks out there that it's very hard to choose. So the thing is, what I would do, if I would create a new project and I have to set up my application architecture, I would start doing that and trying to figure out, well, maybe if you have a layered architecture, what most people do, try to figure out what are the layers that I absolutely need in my architecture. Don't use too many, because you will never be able to get rid of them, but identify the layers that you need Identify the architectural elements that go in there. Usually there are basic patterns that come out of the pattern books like domain object or gateway um, or uh, a model view controller structure, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe you use use cases in your application architecture too. So identify those elements. Identify what the responsibility should be for those elements. Um, identify which other elements they need to collaborate with, for instance, um, if I have to get the, um, the state of the main object, maybe I can ask a gateway. If that's the pattern you're using, then you should notice that the pattern is there, right? And you have to talk to the gateway to get that done. Um, so identify those, match them to your application architectural requirements, stuff like availability or uh, how many users are you going to have, like two million users, then you probably do have to do different architectural styling to, to be able to supply that. And only after that, try to figure out what are the frameworks that will actually help me realize these, these architectural goals. Instead of saying, okay, here's my architecture. It is a speed on that MVC. It is entity framework. It is log for net. It is an hibernate or whatever you do. Um, that's our architecture. That's not an architecture. That's a list of frameworks. So you should always start from your architecture and then move to the frameworks and not the other way around. I started collecting patterns to keep you independent of that stuff uh, uh, maybe like 15 years ago. Um, so there, there's a whole bunch of them. Basically, um, a lot of people use dependency ejection. Well, that's basically the structure that most people use to be independent of, of how to create stuff and which stuff is created and how it is created. Um, but then again, uh, um, uh, also, dependency ejection engines, um, they can also change. So if you have code everywhere in the application that creates an instance of my engine, of your engine, um, that's also a dependency. So uh, uh, what I, in general, would do is look at patterns that um, create a very thin layer of independence between the frameworks you're using and your application code. So that becomes a sort of like, uh, 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 let's say, a, a shield over the frameworks, a very thin shield though, that can help you be a little bit more independent. One of those examples would be uh, layer supertypes. Layer supertype is a great pattern for starting to develop your code based on your architecture. So it could have, if I have a whole bunch of domain objects in my code, I could have a domain object layer supertype that uh, all the other ones inherit from and I could move the more generic uh, um, code into my domain object class. So that's, that's stuff to build it up. Also, if you have uh, frameworks that you use that have layer supertypes in them, most frameworks do.